Every once in a while, a film role can transform an actor's career. Last year, Hilary Swank gave such a performance in the film Boys Don't Cry, which was based on true events. Swank played the part of Brandon Tina, a gender-tormented teenager who disguised herself as a boy and was subsequently raped and murdered by her male friends. Here is a look at that film. <laughs> what is the matter with you? Oh, no! I don't know what went wrong. You are not a boy. That is what went wrong. You are not a boy. I told them that. They say I'm the best boyfriend they ever had. Do you want your mother to lock you up again? Is that it? Is that what you want? No. Swank has already won a long list of honors, including the New York Film Critics Circle Award and a Golden Globe Award. She is also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. I am pleased to have her back at this table. Welcome back. Thank you. It's so interesting to hear you say that. that it's the second time I've heard yeah. nominated for an Academy Award. You heard it earlier today or yes. you heard it? Yeah, earlier today. Yeah. Um, what does all this mean to you? Well, um, it means to me that I'm being recognized for my work in a movie that I'm very proud to be a part of. Um, it means that people are um, really being drawn to the movie and um, recognizing the importance of the movie, and it's very exciting. It has to be. If it you is. weren't excited about this, then you would be somehow <laughs> not alive and, and not real yeah, and human. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what has it meant for you in terms of people saying, wow, if you can do that, you can do this for me. You can, if you can do that, you, can, you ought to be in this film. I mean, have you been overwhelmed by people who now know you and understand all the talent that was already there, which is what's great about the story? Yeah. Um, well, this has obviously opened a lot of career opportunities for me. Um, I'm getting the chance to work with a lot of talented people, um, which is very, very exciting. And that's that's also one of the pluses about being nominated for an Oscar and getting that that high, that high accolade is that you get those opportunities more frequently. So you're getting lots of people calling you up saying, yeah. "Congratulations! I loved your performance." Yes, and um, would you think about this? You know, I've yeah, absolutely with with other job opportunities, but just even across the board, without even job opportunities, I've had people call me and write me, directors, producers, actresses, people I don't even know, reaching out and telling me um, how the movie has moved them and the performance has inspired them, and um, it's. I can't let, I can't even tell you how that makes me feel, um, to have that much support. And the public, the public comes up to me. I was just talking about this with one of my friends. They stop me on the street by the shoulder and they look in my eye six inches away from me and they say, this movie has done so much for me and uh, you don't know what this, what this means to me. And to talk to someone on that soul level is really what life's about. And why do you think it does so much for them? I mean, in other words, I mean, you might say, this was an admirable, this was a very strong and admirable mm -hmm. character. Um, uh, and you may say your portray portrayal is brilliant, but for it to change people's lives. I think it's a lot of different reasons. I think it's done a lot in the transgendered and gay communities, obviously. Um, I think this is one of the first movies that has really dealt with um, those issues on a, 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 a real level. Um, but there's also people who come up to me and say, I could relate to Brandon. I'm not gay, I'm not transgender, but I could relate to Brandon because he was a person who lived his life the way he wanted, and I wish I could do that. Mm. They'll say that to me, things like that. You know, um, and, 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 and Brandon... the courage to be himself. Exactly. And Brandon's given that to me. Yeah. He's inspired me yeah. to live in the moment and to, to follow my dream and to not conform to what other people want, think I should be or want me to be. You know, and um, there's nothing better in life than being able to have that clarity, and so hopefully it'll stay with me. Take a look at this. This is a, an actress that you will recognize on this program talking about you. Here it is. Definitely the best movie I've seen this year. I, I think one, one of the a, best movies I've seen. Too. I think that if she doesn't win the Academy Award, there is no justice. I think she is absolutely one of the, that was one of the best performances I've ever seen given by an uh, actress. I think I really, really mean that. I think. It is one of the greatest performances ever given by an actress. I was, I, I've seen that movie six times. It's, um, you can see it makes me emotional. I, I, um, first of all, coming from a woman who, whose work I admire and, and someone who I, I admire as a human being, I mean, she's been around a long time and um, 
it's it's it makes me feel good, you know. Yeah. I, I um, Winona Ryder says that you ought to get the Academy Award. Winona <laughs> Ryder seen your film seven times. Winona, when Winona Ryder yeah. is someone who's you says, know is and so admirable. I mean, she's an amazing talent, and to I think be outwardly honest with those type of emotions in a in a in a business that I think that a lot of people talk about, you know, where people aren't supportive of one another and they're out to get one another. I think that um, her being so open about that just shows the type of human being she is. How did you get into this character of, of you know, a woman who mm -hmm. is going to change her appearance and live as well, a man? Well, um, as you can imagine, um, when I f got the opportunity um, after I auditioned and fought to get this role and they offered it to me, I knew that if I couldn't pass as a boy that I didn't want to do the movie. I knew I'd be doing it a grave injustice. I mean, this was someone's life. You know, and um, I wanted to be able to tell the story in a way that one Brandon would be proud of, and in a way that, in a, which Brandon lived. I mean, Brandon passed as a boy, and people believed he was a boy. Um, so I, um, for four weeks, lived my life as a boy. That just entailed every single day waking up in the morning and doing everything that I needed to do as Hillary in my day to day life, the errands I needed to run, but as a boy, um, strapping my breast, packing a sock dressing my husband's clothes. I had cut my hair off and it was the best. I mean, it was so instrumental in my transformation and the process to play this role because I really got to see how people reacted to me. I got to see what worked and what didn't work from someone who didn't know what I was doing. And I also got to see what it feels like to be a transgendered on the streets and to see what emotions that brought to me. And what did you discover about all these things? Um, what worked, what didn't work, what was a reaction to Well, you? I mean, it was, if, sometimes if I didn't pass, it might have been my voice being too high. Um, I don't know exactly, because I never said, hey, what made you think I was a girl? Yeah. Um, but I, I would just so try something So what would people would actually say to you, no, they, why, why are you I knew dressing they, like a No, boy? no, no one would ever say that. But what people would do was they would say, it was, it was the difference of pronoun they would use. And that's how I'd know that, ah. what they thought. Like, um, oh, this kid needs some help. He wants a Coke. Get him a Coke. I knew I was passing as a boy. Um, she needs a seat at, to, at the table. Can you seat her? You know, that's and how I knew. Passing, right. um, or I've, I even had someone say, um, he, he, she, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they'd get uncomfortable because they didn't know what I was. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a very, um, it's, I think it says a lot about our society, why we're so uncomfortable by that. Um, I really got to see what it felt like to be a transgendered person. I've always realized prejudices that, that occur in our society. And unless you're really experien experiencing them and on the side of, you know, that people are being prejudiced towards you, you don't really know what it's like. And I got to see what it's like to be a transgendered person to kind of not fit into a stereotypical definition of boy or girl. And it's a very sad place, and it's a very lonely place. And to think that I was passing as a boy, yet I was the same person inside, with the same yeah. needs, wants, insecurities, desires, and I was treated night and day difference. I learned a lot about humanity, and I learned a lot about myself, and I learned a lot about the way I want to live my life. Okay, take the last two. What did you learn about yourself? Um, I learned um, the quick judgments that I can put on someone in my first impression of may somebody. May not be fair. That may not be fair. Um, um, I learned that I want to live a life that's more meaningful. Um, I want to be in the moment and really enjoy the, the loved ones that I have around me and appreciate them and not take them for granted. Um, take a look at this just before mm -hmm. we get too far along in the story. I want the audience at home to see uh, a case in which Brandon is confronted by a police officer who is aware of her real identity as a boy. Miss Brandon, we put your Charles Brayman ID number through the computer yesterday, and uh, this is what the Lincoln authorities faxed us over. <clears throat> you tell me. Wow. This Tina chick seems pretty messed up. It's uh, when I see that I just I think about Brandon so much that it was someone Brandon was someone who was living his life the way he wanted mm -hmm. and um, this movie I think means so much to me it's a love story and it's a story a coming of age story and it's it's a movie that is about following your dreams and I think that that's why people are relating to it when I see that I just see 
what Brandon do you, do went you through. Do you think that Tina, that she thought she would ever get caught? Or she thought she could pull this off, or it didn't matter. She just had to be what she wanted it to be. Mattered. I don't think she thought of it in those types of things, like, am I going to get caught? Or I think that she, he was just saying, this is how I want to live. This is what feels good. This is what brings me the most joy. And I have so much love to give, and I want to give that and find someone to share that love with. Um, I think that that's, and when you see the documentary, you see that. You see all the women who love Brandon, yeah. who Brandon loved. How much did that help you seeing the documentary? Um, you know, it helped, but, but, but really the passing was the biggest uh, help on, for me, the most instrumental passing on the street. Yeah. And the books I read on transgendered people, I read tons of different literature in the court transcripts. All telling you what? Um, what it's like to live as a transgendered person or a gay and lesbian in, in this world that's full of stereotypes, really. Here's another clip from the film, uh, Boys Don't Cry. This is when Lana visits Brandon in jail. Come here. It's a person who has both girl and boy parts. Brandon's real name's Tina Brandon. Oh, well, see, Brandon's not quite a he. Brandon's more like a shut up. It's your business. Look, I don't care if you're half monkey or half ape. I'm getting you out of here. You know what's amazing about this too is it, um, as to whether you benefited from the fact that you weren't known. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely think that. I remember Kim saying that they didn't want someone famous. Kim being famous. the director. Yes, Kimberly right, Pierce. Right. Saying that um, she didn't want someone famous because they, she didn't want the audience to say, oh, there's so-and-so playing a boy and therefore not be able to get lost in the story. Mm. This way people didn't know me and they could just watch it and get caught up in Brandon's dream. I, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to ask this, but it's, it so stands there. Is it everybody surprised by what's happened in this film that had anything to do with it? I, I mean, think as, so. As much as you loved it, as much as you believed in it, the no. fact that you now are nominated for an Academy Award and many yeah. people think you're the favorite to be selected as, an, as the best actor. I absolutely think so. This movie was made for under $2 million. We all did it for the, it was a labor of love. We did it because of the importance of it and that we yeah. all wanted to be a part of it. No one was getting paid to do this movie. And um, it coming, uh, you know, being the underdogs and getting this, this attention is, it's just thrilling and it's exciting. And I think it um, speaks a lot about where we're going in, yeah. in the world and, and what we're ready for. Tell me about people that you admire, role models for you. Mm -hmm. um, well, Meryl Streep is my acting role model. I've always admired her. She is my acting god, and I've said that before. I think she's just absolutely incredible. I almost get disinspired when I watch her because she's so good. I think I will never be that. Um, now why? What is it about her that makes you feel that? Um, I, 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 I don't think there's a word to define to it. I, I don't know what it is. It's a quality and a luminescence and a realness that she brings in all these characters that she develops that are so real. And I don't know how she does it. I watch it and I just think, how are you doing that? You believe that that is that person and that when you meet her, you're gonna meet, be meeting these characters. Um, you know, I met her when I was at the Golden Globes and she stopped me and she was so generous. And like I was saying to you that everyone being supportive, when, supportive Winona and Meryl and everyone, Julianne Moore, they're all being very supportive of me. And she stopped me and she grabbed my hand and she kissed me and she said, congratulations, you know, you deserve this. And I almost didn't wash my face for the whole year. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it was, it's just an honor to be, to have my name uttered in the same breath as these women is just an honor. And I, I feel honored and I, it's very exciting. It's very thrilling. And um, Oprah Winfrey is actually also one of my role models as a human being. I love her. I think she's a talented actress, but I think she's just an incredible human being. All that she does for humanity and and the type of person open and honest with herself. To these are two women who really move me. I could go on and on. I have. <laughs> do you know what you're going to do next? Um, right now, I'm doing a movie called The Gift. Um, it's a supporting role in a, an amazing ensemble cast. Sam Raimi is directing, Kate Blanchett, uh, Giovanni Robisi, uh, Greg Kinnear, Michael Jeter, Keanu Reeves, Katie Holmes. I mean, it's an amazing cast. Um, it's a murder mystery. It's very fun. I'm, sh I'm, I'm filming in Savannah, Georgia, and I feel like I'm at acting camp. 
we just <laughs> they're so great all the other actors are so gracious and talented and Sam is amazing so I'm en really enjoying myself it's my first movie since Boys Don't Cry um, I've kind of sandwiched myself in between all this great talent you know I um, mean my movie after that is a based on a true story and it's a period piece and um, it's called Affair of the Necklace and I'm very excited about it that shoots um, this summer in Paris and in Prague oh so. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on the broadcast. Good luck. Thanks. I always love coming here. The film, as you know, is Boys Don't Cry, nominated for Best Actress, Hilary Swank.